We all know how important it is for Eric Ten Hag to get this summer right. With signings and sales and shaping his squad up, if the era of Eric Ten Hag is going to be successful, it has to start in the right way. So what I'm going to do in this video is run through my squad prediction for next season. I'm going to run through every single position inside this squad, the starting 11, and also taking a look at the strength in depth. What players are we going to have behind that 11? How strong overall is the squad going to be? I'm going to predict the signings we're going to make. I'm going to speak about every position. It's going to be, I think, a good video. So please, would you consider subscribing? Go down there, hit that subscribe button, join the United People's TV community. As well as that, hit the notification bell as well. Why not? Right, get involved. But as I said, we're going to run through every single position here. We're going to run through every single player who's inside this squad here. And we're going to see who we think that Eric Ten Hag will want to be signing for Manchester United. And let's start with the goalkeepers, right? Let's start here. I think there will be changes in, in the goalkeeping department. I don't think it's going to be with the starting goalkeeper, though. I think we're going to be seeing David De Gea as Manchester United's number one next season. And I personally think you're going to be seeing this behind him. And I'll explain that. You'll see Heaton and Johnson there. You'll see no Lee Grant. And you'll see no Dean Henderson. I personally think that Dean Henderson will not stay inside this squad. He will not just settle for a number two position. I think Manchester, whether he gets loaned out, whether he gets sold, I don't quite know that part yet. But I personally do not think that we will see Dean Henderson at Manchester United next season. I just don't think that we could be able to keep him happy and not on the wages he's on. And Lee Grant, you know, kind of full well what I thought about Lee Grant the whole way through. What is he? What does he do? He's just our third choice goalkeeper. And that's why I've got Sam Johnson down there. He can come in as a third, as a, I think coming in on a free from... Um, West Brom, it's either going to be Johnson, it's either going to be Grant, and realistically, it doesn't really matter. But I think Tom Heaton will probably end up being our number two next year. And we won't reinvest that money if we do make money from selling or loaning Dean Henderson because we can just have Heaton coming in as the backup. That's what I think so anyway. Now, moving on to right back, I think there will be changes. Now, let me write all these, num all these names in here before you bite my head off, right? And you'll definitely see a new signing in here for sure. Got there, we got there. That's who I've got down as the right back options. It's going to start getting a bit busy, this isn't it? We start moving players up and down. I'll start moving you down there. I'm moving you there, moving you there. So you don't overlap, probably will. But Delo, Timber, Laird, and Williams. Spoiler alert I'm putting Timber down as a signing for Manchester United. I think this is the only, only transfer this summer. But I've got any sort of air of confidence of completing. I'm going to run through into the, the central midfield, the defensive midfield positions, and also right winger as well, the positions I think we do need to strengthen. But for me, Durian Timber seems the one that's the most likely, not just because he's a former Ajax player, but simply because as well, I think he I think he will want to join United. I think Ten Hag has been aggressively going for him, and I can see him coming in. I wouldn't actually put him down as a... You can see him down there as, as, a, as an option at right back, but that's not where I want to start him. Spoiler alert, that's centre back. And there's going to be no Aaron Wan-Bissaka here. If we were to head over to here and look down this list, Aaron Wan-Bissaka for me, I think Manchester United will probably loan him out this year. I don't think we'll be able to sell him on, on a permanent deal, but I, he just will not suit this system under Eric Ten Hag. It just won't happen. It just won't happen. And there's no harm in admitting that. It was just something that didn't work out. Now, I've got uh, Ethan Laird there and Brandon Williams down as a fourth choice. I think Williams can probably come in. I mean, you can probably take... No, nah, it's a bit unfair. I won't take Williams off that list. I think he'll stay at the club. But I would put Williams and Laird. I think Hughes had a great season on that loan at, at Swansea. Not so much at Bournemouth. But they've won promotion. And I think Ethan Laird will come back into this team. Now, if we move down here to this centre-back position, that's where I hope you will see Timber. And also, this is where I think it gets interesting because you start to get a bit more strength in Manchester United's squad. This really is going to start getting busy. Let me move you the whole way down there. Let me move you up a little bit. There we go. That's a little bit neater, isn't it? Sorry about that. We're, we're doing it whilst we're, we're editing as we go. That's what we do. But Timber, 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 Timber coming in. We need that ball playing centre back to fit this Eric Ten Hag system if it's going to work. And as I said, out of all the transfers that we've been linked with, for me, that's the one that I've got most confidence in completing that. Famous last words, I know. But Timber with Lindelof behind him. And I've got Ten and Mengi down there as a third choice. You could put Reese Bennett if you want there, um, who's the captain of the under-18s. I don't know whether he'll come through at this point. Mengi obviously had a loan spell at Birmingham before he got injured. But I don't personally think 
he'll go back out on loan. We'll see anyway. And as for the other centre-back choices, again, this is what I think we should be seeing next year. Uh, I've, I've got him down there, but again, that, that might not happen necessarily. I've got Varane as first choice, and I've got Maguire as second choice. I think we now have to look at Harry Maguire as a defender on the level of Viktor Lindelof. A, a defender you can take in and out of the starting eleven, and not too much is said about it, not too much is criticised. He's that level of centre-back now. He's nowhere near that starting eleven guaranteed anymore, and I personally think it should be Varane playing alongside Timber as our two starting centre-backs. That's what I would like to see next season. Whether or not we see it next season, well, that's something different altogether. But that's what I think we should hopefully be seeing. Now, after that, we move on to the left-back position. And this is what I believe we will be seeing. Again, this is my prediction. Famous last words. It probably won't happen at all. But this is what I think the squad would look like. I think Luke Shaw will come back in and I think he'll hopefully refine that form that sort of, he was excellent that season where England went to the Euros final. I don't know whether he's going to stay for the long term. And ideally, I would probably put Tellers in the same bracket as I would Aaron Wan-Bissaka. If we're going back over here, looking at the squad, Alex Tellers for me over here, I mean, nah, nah, he's just not done enough. Not since he's joined from Porto. He was supposed to be that established, ready-made fullback. And he's just, he's not lived up to the hype. I'd rather see Alvaro Fernandez come in as the second choice behind Tellers. But I think Tellers could be kept on next year. Let's see what happens there. But it's in midfield, of course, where we start to get the real questions. And hopefully we start to see the real, real signings. Now, what I would say is here, I'll be, I'll be incredibly surprised if I'm correct with these predictions, but these, these, this is sort of my, what my gut instinct is telling me. There's one player I would love to put here as a defensive midfielder. It's not Frankie de Jong. It's not Christopher Nkunku. Well done, Sam. Click all the right ones. It's already in Chua Many. He's the person I would love to put in this position, but it's not the, it's not the name I'm going to put down there. I don't think Manchester United will be able to afford what we need to do this summer and bring him in. Now, trust me when I say I know I'm scraping the barrel effectively when I'm doing this, but I've got that those three down there. I've been thinking about it for a while in terms of who the strength and depth would be there. And I've gone for Conrad Lamer as the signing. Uh, the 24-year-old from uh, RB Leipzig is someone who's got... He's a real... He's a sort of midfielder who presses with intensity, who wins the ball back. He's a pest, a proper pest of a midfielder, someone who moves around a lot, wins the ball back. He's also good at ball carrying. Now, Conrad Lamer strikes me as a signing that Manchester United could make in that position that would massively strengthen that role and also give us the funds as well. To because we want, if, if we're looking at a budget of, what, 140 million euros, even if we wanted Chouameni and De Jong and Nkunku and all of that, we're not going to be able to afford it this summer. So that's why I've got Lamer down there. And I've got McTominay and I've got Dylan Levitt as the backup. As a Dylan Levitt's played quite a lot of central midfield for Dundee this season. And he's played a few times as a defensive midfielder, as I said. I'm scraping the barrel here because I don't think we've still, we still will not have much strength in that position. But I'm going to put Lamer down as the prediction for that defensive midfield signing. And I hope it's true of money and I hope I'm wrong. Now going over here, this probably will be wrong. But I don't know why. Something is just telling me that it will happen. Right? And that's what I'm going down as the, as the strength in depth. I'm going to go for De Jong as that central midfield signing. Famous last words. Let's see what goes on. I personally think a fee in the region of 50 to 55 million is something that would tempt Barcelona enough. It would be a slight loss on what they paid on him, but it would also give them what they need. And if De Jong can buy into the project to United and wants to buy into the project to United, then I want him at Manchester United. So I actually think that United will keep going after De Jong and Ten Hag will want De Jong. If it's not De Jong who signed in that position, it will be someone of his ilk. That is for sure. But that is who I'm going to put down as my central midfielders. I'm going to go for Lamer and De Jong. As I said, that might not work out in any way, shape or form. Let's find out, right? But I don't think United could afford to get someone like Chouameni, even if he is the best player in that role. If we're going to sign De Jong, I think we're going to spend more on De Jong than we would on his partner, Lamer. That's what I'm going to go in midfield. Let's move to up front. We've got left wing, right wing, attacking midfielder, and up front. Let's start with the attacking midfielder, which I think is a bit more straightforward, right? I think there are probably... This one's pretty... Much, I wouldn't say guaranteed, but this one feels pretty secure, right? In terms of our three options. Bruno starting with Donny behind him and Hannibal as the third choice. Hannibal should be getting some game time next season. Any game time that Pogba was afforded this season, it will go to someone like Hannibal and Donny van der Beek as well. 
he will want to try and force his way into this team. But Bruno is our probably going to be our captain next season, I'd argue. And Bruno will be starting for Manchester United. Now, so many still want to criticise Bruno, but literally no player has, has created more chances than him in the last, what is it, season, two seasons in the Premier League? He is a creator. He, there's parts of his game he needs to polish. I hope that uh, Eric Ten Hag can coach that into him. But for me, I think that attacking midfield is, is relatively straightforward, a relatively straightforward conversation. If we were to, let me just move these up here so we've got a little bit more space to breathe when we write the names in. If we were to move over to the left wing, this is who I've got down as my three options. I think Jaden Sancho starts there as our out-and-out -out first choice left winger next season. And I think you've got Rashford and Garnacho as the two to boost the squad strength. That's what I would go for on the left wing for Manchester United. Now, if we do sign a versatile forward, I'm going to run into who I think that would, well, questionable, who I think it would be. Of course, that person can play on the left wing. That person can play in the number 10 role as well. Let's see what goes on there. But I think Sancho is definitely going to be our out and out first choice left winger. He's proven that he can. Do, I mean, he could be on the right wing. But I think if we're going to sign a versatile forward, that's probably where that versatile forward is going to play more so than Sancho, who's shown his effectiveness on the left wing. Rashford will just have to fight for his place in this team, man. Garnacho will fight for this place, his place in this team. And I think if I'm looking at strength and depth, I like that left wing position. Sancho, Rashford and Garnacho. That's three good options there. I like that. Now, right wing. This is where it might get... I don't know whether this is going to happen or not. I'll be honest. But I, this is what I've got for. I've gone for, right? Uh, let's see. I put all in there. I've gone for this man. Not that man. I'm going to click the right one. Christopher and Kunku. Now, the only thing that I think that's going to stop this really is the finances behind it all. Uh, if I'm looking at who we're going to be signing here, what we're going to go for, Timber, Lamer, De Jong, and Nkunku. That's what, Timber's what, around about 40 million. Lamer, I don't know, 35, 40 million. De Jong, I said, I think 55 minutes, was that 80 plus that 130. Plus Nkunku, which would be 70, that's 200. We're hearing about a 120 budget. But then you have to take into account the likes of, if we were to sell Dean Henderson, I think we should be selling Eric Bailly. I think we should be selling Phil Jones. Uh, let's go down here. Who else are we selling? Uh, I think Wan Bissaka should be going out on loan with a with a view for to a permanent move. Hobby leaving on a free, Mata leaving on a free, Lingard leaving on a free, Pereira hopefully leaving. Um, who else? There's more. Matic leaving on a free. Let's go down here as well. Martial being sold. There's so many players that should and could be sold by Manchester United this summer that I think this 200 million is not an outrageous selection. Anyway, but Nkunku. I managed to click the right one. Go on, get in there. I think he is the versatile forward that we keep talking about, that we keep hearing about. You could you could easily add Nkunku's name into that position there to be play behind Bruno. You can easily add his name here as well. And you could easily, and you would, add his name right there. And if we're being honest, I don't think this will happen. But if we're looking at trying to get a bit more strength in depth from the squad that we've got, you might put Charlie McNeil down there too. But Nkunku is going to effectively be the back, not the backup, but the alternative to Ronaldo. Whether it's Nkunku who comes in on that right wing and could play centre forward and can play attacking mid and the left wing or not, it has to be somebody of his ilk. And I think there's not really, I mean, it's Bundesliga player of the year, even though Leipzig finished fourth. It goes to show how impressive a season he had there. But I would put that, I've thought about it, so I've really, really thought about it, so I've written it all down. This is what I think, this is my, this is my prediction. I mean, what, watch my prediction be absolutely crap. An abomination of a prediction. And then when we do a, a follow-up video on this come the start of the season, I'm absolutely nowhere near. But I've got De Gea in goal with Heaton and Johnson as the two backup options. Uh, that could easily be Lee Grant instead of Johnson. Doesn't, that doesn't really matter either way. The low I've got is a right back there. and I don't know whether he's going to be starting right back. I really don't. But Timber, because I've got Timber down as a starting centre back, but he can also play right back. I would like to see Ethan Laird really get a chance there, but let's see what happens. Timber, Laird and Williams as the right back options. Centre back with Timber as the signing. Lindelof and Mengi as the options. Mengi might go back out on loan though, so we'll see. But I've gone for Varane ahead of Maguire naturally, and I think that's what it should be. Maguire and Lindelof now should be the two centre back alternatives, the backups who are first choice centre backs. They shouldn't either of them be Manchester United's first choice centre backs. Varane and Timber, that's a partnership I can get along with. 
I've gone for Shaw as fullback with Tellers and Fernandez as the two options behind him. I really want to see Alvaro Fernandez break through this year. Let's see what he does. Now, it's in midfield where I'm probably going to get it all wrong. I've gone for Conrad Lehmer from RB Leipzig. I don't think we'll be able to afford Chouameni, even if I think Chouameni would be the best signing that we could make in that position, and it would be. Given what United need to do this summer, given the fact that we keep hearing these budgets of 120 to 140 million, even though I'm spending 200 million in this one, but I'm caveating the fact that we are selling a lot. There's a lot leaving as well. Uh, I've gone for Com Comrade Lehmer and uh, Frankie de Jong. I think de Jong should be available in the region of 55 million ish if he wants to join United. And that's a big caveat, of course. If he doesn't want to join United, we move on, we go elsewhere. But even if you look at Ruben Neves, he's probably going to cost more than de Jong would. Even if you, I don't know any other ones that we've been linked with, but. They're all a player of that quality in the region of 50 million plus, whether it's De Jong or someone else. Then uh, in attacking midfield, I've gone for Bruno with Van Der Beek and Hannibal as the two backups. That one seems pretty set and I'm happy with that one. Same with the left wing. Sancho is the first choice with Rashford and Garnacho as the two players behind him. On the right wing, I've gone for Nkunku as my versatile forward. Let's see what goes on there. If it's not Nkunku, you let me know who you think it will be in the comments below. And I've got, I've got Elanga, Ahmed and Palistri as options behind him. Maybe we'll see Palistri go back out on loan. But I think Elanga should be staying at the club next year. The loan spell wasn't exactly successful at Glasgow. He had fleeting appearances. He had fleeting goals. But I think he can get coached into a better player. There's no way you spend 40 million on an 18-year-old and just dash him off to Rangers and just forget about him. He needs to come back and he needs to be coached properly. I've gone for Ronaldo up front with Nkunku and I've gone for Charlie McNeil just to give us some options. But I think we're scraping the barrel still, kind of in this role. McTominay and Levitt as the two holding midfield backups. My God. McNeil is a backup to Ronaldo? I mean, that's a drop-off and a half. It's not a perfect squad, but it's stage one. And it's my prediction of what I think United will do. You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. How wrong am I? What positions do you agree with? What positions do you disagree with? Would you be happy if that was our squad going into next season? Because it's all about strength in that we need that squad, man, so we can rotate in certain games and keep everyone fresh particularly Cristiano Ronaldo, which is why the likes of starting someone like Christopher Nkunku is so important. We need that versatile forward who, can we, who means we can allow Ronaldo to rest and we don't miss a goal-scoring threat. You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. I think it'll be an interesting video to do. That's why I wanted to do it. Maybe after the summer's finished, we'll go back and I'll take a look at these predictions and probably rip them apart. You can let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. And I'll see you soon.